So we're going to get going. You can see your um, your turtle trinket course in front of you. Um, don't worry that it took you a little bit of time to log in or get get to yourself set up, um, because if you're joining the live classes, that's the whole purpose of this is to get you um, set up, get you ready. Um, if you're watching this later, for those of you who are watching the video, uh, you will not see this. You will see. Um, some starter code on this page because this is for my Zoom group. However, my Zoom group are going to be going to the assignment and you are going to be editing and starting the assignment now. And what we're going to do is we are going to walk through using our turtles to create some animations today. So I'm going to show you what it is that we are going to end up with. So you can see here I've got some student submissions at the bottom there so i will be able to keep an eye on here to see who submitted the code and i'll be able to have a look at your code as well right at the end this is what we should end up with so in trinket you see your code on the left and you see your code running on the right at the top here you've got a run button so when i click run my turtle is going to run around my screen it's going to color in. It's then going to create some random circles, a yellow circle, and it's going to go back to the end. Now you can see the difference between this one and the one that we did last time is that we've got an actual turtle um, rather than our little arrow. We do have some colors. Um, and because we're all using the same environment, it means that we can all help each other. Now, this is not going to be the first thing that you do your starter code that you have is actually this one and it's a cut down version so that we can have a look through and pick out some of the really really important sections of using python turtle so last time when we looked at this we saw this section here so we imported turtle now importing turtle means that we can actually use python turtle so it's an extension it's also known as a library file we're going to use random. Now, random was what allowed me to go and create some random, excuse me, some random colors. So if I go back to my test turtle again and I run it again, what I end up with is I should still end up with this green at the bottom and a green stem for my flower. But actually, I end up with lots of random petal colors. So if I go back to the starter, I've already written for you this section here. Now, this is what we were looking at last time, which was to draw a circle. Now, one thing that turtle does have the ability to do is to do T dot circle and dot circle when you use your T. Now, remember, T is our turtle. It's the name of our turtle. And if you want to use something other than T, like I believe last time it was um, Jeff um, or Steve, um, then you can still do that. And that's absolutely fine. So here, t.circle is, ah, Greg, yeah, that's it. Bean has just reminded me it was Greg last time. Um, so in this case, t.circle will allow me to draw a circle at a certain size. So in this case, I'm going to start here. So I'm going to pop in a hash because a hash will allow me to create a comment and put in capitals this is where the main program starts so actually this is the first line that actually gets run the first thing I've done is I've created a list now we know it's a list because it's got square brackets around it and I've created a list of the colors that I might want to use for my um, for my petals up here I've already given you a comment with a little link that you can copy and paste if you want to um, this is a list of all of the different uh, colors that you could possibly use uh, specifically with Python Turtle. So if I copy that and I open up a new tab and I paste it in here, you can see that we've got huge, huge amounts of colors. So you can have any of those colors at all. And what you do is you use the color name. 
but you have to make sure that the colour name is exactly as you see it here. The next thing we're going to do is just like last time, and you can see T equals turtle dot turtle. So that's creating my turtle. Um, then we've got T dot shape. We've got a pen size as two, and then we've got our draw grass. Now, I've created some little bits in here, um, which probably won't look very good. So I can see, um, Bear with me a second, because I've got a message in our Zoom group. I've sent you um, OK, so if you're in our Zoom group, please make sure that you're using the uh, Google Doc that I sent you. Um, then I can see everybody's code at the same time in just one place. I'm going to run this code and show you what it looks like. So at the moment, um, it's drawing a strange square. It's drawing a red circle and a black circle. So what we can do here is we're going to have to say, well, these are all of the component parts, um, but it's not quite the flower we were looking for. So we're going to have to take this and we're going to have to adjust it. So let's have a little look here. So I've got, oh, I've got some new docs. Excuse me just a second. There we go. I've got one from Bean here. Um, and that's what Bean's code looks like. Amazing. So Bean, that code is absolutely brilliant. That's exactly what it should look like right now, because right now we haven't got enough code um, for it to actually finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can make that grass a bit better. So right now, if we look at the draw grass section, we've got T dot up. That means that the pen is going up. We are going to minus 200 minus 150. Now, if we go to zero, zero, so let's uh, let's adjust this because you can change the code and play about with it. So if we change this go to to zero, zero, um, in the Zoom chat, can you give me an idea? Where do you think, if I set it to zero, zero, where is it going to draw my grass block? OK, Bean thinks it's in the middle. Boo thinks it's the bottom left corner. OK. So let's have a go. So I put zero, zero. I'm going to click run and I'm going to test this out. So Bean was absolutely correct. It started in the middle because zero, 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 zero in turtle is actually the very, very center. So in this case, if we wanted to go back, so I'm going to do control Z, control Z. So minus 200, minus 150. What this will do is it will go minus 200 this way and then oh no, minus 200 this way first and then minus 200 this way. So it goes X, Y. So in this case, if I run now, it's going to go all the way down to um, almost the bottom. So it's actually it's starting off um, here where my cursor is. So this is your minus 150 and then it's going to go minus 200, which is all the way to the side, and then it's going to start drawing the box. Now, the box isn't long enough because we want green. We would essentially want grass all the way across. So we've now got a for loop. Can anyone in the Zoom chat remind me what a for loop is for? So Boo is saying it repeats four times. Can anyone else give me an explanation of a for loop? And I know there are some people in here doing GCSE computing or computer science. So 
a for loop, F-O-R, rather than F-O-U-R, as in the, the number four. Four means repeats a set number of times. And the number of times it repeats is inside this in range. So in this case, we've got for i. i is the counter. So i acts as a thing called a variable. And a variable gets to hold a value. So i in a for loop, or in this for loop, will be given the number 0 to start off with. And then as the loop repeats, it's going to keep going up by 1 until it reaches the second number in those brackets. So in this case, if we said for i in range of 0 to 2, i will be given 0, then it will be given 1, and then when it gets to 2, it stops. So in this case, it's going to repeat twice. But a for loop goes for a certain number of times. So in this case, it's going to do these next four lines twice. And we know it's going to do those particular four lines because they are indented inside the code. So here, we're going to go forward 50 pixels, right 90 degrees, and then forward 50, and then right 90 degrees again. So in the Zoom group, can you write in for me which of those lines, what line number do you think I need to change in order to make my turtle go all the way across the screen? Forward 50. Bean thinks I need to go 500, but which line number? So it's either line number 26, 27, 28, or 29. Which one of those? 26. Okay, so let's see if I can do that. So Bean thinks I should go 500 across. So we definitely need to do forward more. Um, let's see what happens if it's line 26. It goes across, all the way across. That seems pretty good. There we go. We still have an interesting looking flower, but we definitely, definitely have some grass. So you are absolutely correct. So we are going to adjust line 26. And now our grass works. And the reason our grass works is because we've used line 23 and 24. So we've set our color, so t.color to green, and then t.fill to true. So this means once we have drawn our shape, it's going to be filled in with that colour. And then once we're done, we then have to set it to false. Otherwise, when we draw another shape or when we move somewhere else, it's going to keep trying to fill it in and you get some very odd looking shapes. So with your code, you want to make sure line 26 goes all the way across the screen. How do we see the full screen of the turtle? So I believe you are on this one here. Make sure that you are editing. Um, and then when you want to see it, you can go to the run section up here. I believe um, in the trinkets, you can actually edit the trinket and it will turn into its own page. OK, so you're going to change line 26. We're going to make some grass. If we wanted to, and I'm going to um, I'm going to do something slightly different here. I'm going to have some, um, ooh, what color shall I have for the grass? Uh, let's go for magenta. I'm going to have some magenta grass. So you can see here, if I then set the color to magenta, when I run it again, I end up with some interesting looking pink grass, um, which pr probably isn't really what I want. So let's pop that back to green. So that gives us our grass. We're pretty much done with that. The next thing is the flower stem. Now, the flower stem, what I've done here is I've got t.up, t.go to, and then I've got some question marks for you. So here, what we want to do is we want to figure out what it is that I need to do in order to draw the stem of my flower. So I'm going to just play the full thing again so we have a look. So there is the stem. 
So we've already got the go to. So the go to is going to send us here. So Zoom group, what should we do or what should I do in my starter code to now draw a line that goes up? Oh, up pen. OK, so we want to do. Um, so we've got the up pen on line 34. We've got a go to. So Bean said we should do another T dot up. Oh, put the pen down and then the pen up. OK, so we've got T dot down. OK, and then T dot up. OK, let's run that and see what happens. So draws the grass. All good. It's filling the grass. Oh, no. And one thing that it will do is if we try and do something that doesn't actually get it to draw anything on the screen, um, it will do it so quickly that we as humans actually don't get to see it. So it's running that line 34 to line 38 without us really seeing. So if our pen up didn't work, Zoom group, what else might we do in order to draw our line? So if we have a little look here, we're going to start here and we want to draw all the way up to somewhere like that. OK, so the next thing we really want to do is we want to go forward. So if we wanted to do t, oh, t dot forward, and then we've already said, well, 500 is the whole thing. So let's try 200. So if we do t dot forward 200, it's going to draw um, our pen. Now, um, at the moment, our pen size is two. So let's see what that looks like. So it goes long, it's going all the way around, it's drawing the grass, and then, oh, we're sending it off along. Now it has drawn a line, but it's still drawing a line horizontally. And we don't want to draw a horizontal line, we want to draw a vertical line going up. So we do definitely want that t dot forward, but what are we going to have to put in between t dot down and t dot forward? Zoom group, send me your answers. Turn by 90 degrees, t dot turn left. Excellent, Boo, it, you are absolutely correct. Bean, you are correct. We are going to have to turn 90 degrees. Now, if we are going along and we're going towards the right, we are going to have to turn left 90 degrees. Um, so therefore, we are going to do t dot left. Ooh, there we go. 90 degrees. So let's see what that looks like. It's drawing the grass. It's all looking good. It's turning. And it drew a line all the way up and it drew a petal in the right place. So you're absolutely correct. We needed to turn our turtle. So we need to go to the right place. We needed to turn our turtle 90 degrees. And then we needed to draw our first petal. So zoom group again. If I wanted my stem, so if I look at the stem on this one, it's quite thin, so it looks like my flower might bend. But if we look at the other one, it's a bit thicker. So what could we do to make the stem, make that line a bit thicker? What can you see? Let's see, on this page right here, that might help us. So everything that you need is somewhere in here. Seth has told me pen size. Excellent stuff. OK, so the pen size is the one that allows us to select how thick the pen is. And right now it is um, set up to two. So at the moment, what we're going to do is we are going to do up the top here. So we're going to go to t dot down. Then we're going to change the pen size, because if we change the pen size after the left and the forward, 
it's not going to draw anything. So t dot pen size, and I'm going to change it to four. Let's make it twice as thick. So we're going to draw this, and I've got some uh, code from Beam that Beam would like me to have a look at. So I'm going to have a look at that in just a second. Slightly thicker stem, petal in the right place, and there. OK, so I'm going to have a look at Beam's code. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Oh, so you've definitely got your grass happening. You've got your petal. Um, it doesn't seem to be going quite as high. So what I'm going to get you to do there, Beam, is to just pop in underneath. Can you pop a screen capture of your code as well? And then what we can do is we can have a look at that um, and see if we can work through it together. OK, so the rest of the Zoom group, if you would like to pop in a tick or a thumbs up inside the Zoom group, Um, to let me know that you have your stem and a petal in the right place. Excellent. I have a tick from Boo. Just waiting for a tick from Seth there. Let's have a little look here. So we have some code here from Bean that we're going to have a look at. So we've got a T up, we've got a go to, we've got a T dot forward. So can anybody help Bean here? What has gone wrong with Bean's code? Excellent. I've got a message from, from Boo to say that Gary is awake today. The down is in the wrong place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would definitely say that the down. So I'm going to write out the code under here. Oh, I'm not. I'm going to delete the picture. Oh, dear. There we go. So I'm going to write this. So we've got T, T dot up. Let's make this a bit bigger. So everyone can see. So we've got t dot up. That's good. Um, we should have a t dot go to, which is zero and minus one fifty. Then Boo has suggested that there should be a t dot down. Then a t dot left which is 90, and then a t dot forward, which is 90. Now, I think that's probably quite close, but I think the flower might still be set to the wrong place. Can anyone else help? Why do you think that Bean is going to end up here with a really, really, really tiny stem on their flower? Oh, yes, we've definitely missed pen size, so they're going to get a very thin one, but I think probably um, Bing can catch up with that one. But in this forward, we're only going forward 90 paces or 90 pixels. So in this one, we set it to 200. Now, you don't have to set it to 200 if you want a really tiny flower. That's absolutely fine. Um, but in order to follow with what we're doing, we've set the stem to be a bit bigger purely so that what we can do is we can go all the way up and then we can start drawing these circles and they're not going to overlap where our stem is. OK, so we have a flower stem. It's going to be four. Now, actually, I'm going to set this to six to make it a little bit sturdier. So in this case, we've gone all the way around. We've drawn our grass. And then we've drawn a nice big stem and a single petal and the, the center of our flower. Well, that's OK. But at this point, we have only drawn one petal. Our flower is not looking very healthy. So 
we need to go all the way down here to line 44. Yours might be a little bit different now because, of course, we've added some of these. So it will be somewhere around 44. Bean's got it sorted. Awesome. We are then going to draw some petals. Now you can see here what I've done in your starter code is I've left little comments in there to identify what each section does. And this is really good for coding standards. So when we are developing code, whether you're doing um, year nine, whether you are doing year eight, whether you are in year 10 and 11 and you're doing your GCSEs or whether you are at A level, making sure that you add comments to your code as you go along to identify what each section does is really good programming practice and actually if you go out and you are a programmer um, then you are still expected to add comments because you are going to be working with other people and they need to know what um, what your code is actually meant to do without having to go read it so on this one we're going to select our pen size back to two then we've got another for loop. So remind me, Zoom group, what does a for loop do? Repeat the number of times, boo, brilliant, yes. So a for loop is there to repeat a set number of times. So for this one, this one is actually only repeating once and it's drawing a red circle. So we've got some missing code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a couple of extra lines here just so that we can see we are just looking at the draw petals. What do you think I could do to my for loop to make it draw the four petals in the original one? Repeat it by four. Brilliant. So um, I've got a four I in range. Set the range to four. Awesome. So for this one, I've got four I in range naught to one. Well, that's only going to repeat once. So let's see what happens if I put it twice and then I'm going to come back. So Boo said make the number one bigger. That's brilliant. Seth said set the range to four. That's amazing. I'm going to set it to two and then I'm going to come back to Seth's idea and set it to four. So here we go. We've got a bit of grass, we've got one, we've got two, and then we've got a strange little circle. So let's see what Seth suggested and set that range to four. So if I run it now, it goes all the way up, draws the stem, one, two, three, four, and a center. And I do appear to have a poppy. Yes. So what you'll notice is that the um, the black center is slightly offset, um, and that was done on purpose. Now I wanted to set my um, my center off to the left a little bit, um, so that it looked a little bit like it was um, a three D picture. So what we can do is, if we want that center to um, to change and you can change it to wherever you like it is that you can change this go to on line 58. I've got it on line 58. Don't worry if you want it to um, to be somewhere else. Um, so you could change that 7 and 50 to wherever you want it. So if you set it by three, it looks like Mickey Mouse looking up. Well, of course, I need to do this now. So let's put that to a three and see what happens. Up it goes. OK, so I've got one, two, three. <laughs> it really does look like Mickey Mouse looking up. Bean, that's amazing. Um, and I might have to do some more of those. Hmm, I have some ideas. So I'm going to set this back to four. OK, and our draw center, if you want to change it, that's absolutely fine. Um, so for this one, if I set that one to zero and 50 and then run it, let's see what happens to the center. So it goes even further off. So I have that at seven. So what we could do is we could 
increase that a little bit more. So if I doubled my original seven, that's 14. So what I'm doing is I'm playing with the number of pixels and the placement of where I am drawing the parts of my flower. Oh dear, I've just put that in the wrong place. Can somebody tell me what I did wrong? I'm going to get my Zoom group to debug my code for me. It did forget the red bits. You're absolutely correct. I put the 14. You put it in the petals. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Bean. I did indeed. That should go back to zero. And the petals should be there. I changed the wrong zero. Now, most teachers will tell you that that was a deliberate mistake. In my case, it absolutely wasn't. I put it in the wrong place and it's really easy to do in coding and it's absolutely fine. So there we go. 14 will give you an absolutely dead center. Um, but I quite like my seven. I quite like it offset. So the last bit we're going to do, instead of drawing a poppy, I want to draw something which is um, a little bit more colorful. And I want to use these colors up here and possibly even more to create some really pretty colors um, or really bold colors um, or I could choose all the pastels it's completely up to you but we're going to do it in random and this is where this draw circle comes in because draw circle is taking in the value 40 and the color red so when we call draw circle down here in our petals it will jump all the way up to the top and it will find this thing called draw circle up here. This is a subroutine. It's actually called a procedure and it's a procedure because it doesn't it doesn't calculate anything or send anything back. So in this case draw circle takes in a value called size and a color called C and we know that it's a value called size and a color called C because when we call it down here we're giving it 40 and red. So up here, we say we're filling, just like we did for the grass. Then we set the color to whatever the second parameter is. And parameters are values which are passed into subroutines inside those brackets. So in this case, we've got two parameters, one called size and one called C. So the second one is the color. And we're going to pass that into the t.color or fred.color. Um, and I can definitely greg.color. And then when we draw our circle, we use the size. Then we set the fill to false because then when we want to move around, we want to not be filling in our color, then we want to set it to true. So this allows us to draw a circle of a particular color of a particular size. Now, if we know that we don't have to always have red, that means that we can start to change it down here. So let's start off by just changing the actual value. Um, so I used magenta before, so let's go back to our color chart. Um, what color, Zoom group, shall we create our flower this time? Pink. I've got pink from absolutely everybody. Right. OK, let's do a pink flower. Deep pink. Right. Deep pink it is. So I want to make sure that I've got deep pink, that one there. OK, I'm going to copy this to make sure that I get it right. I'm going to go into here and find my red and say I would like a deep pink flower. <laughs> that says wheat. OK, I will do a wheat flower as well. So grass, is, grass has been drawn. Off it goes, stem, and then oh, a deep pink flower. Oh, I have to say, I really like that colour, so I'm going to add it to the end. Now, if I want to add more colours to the end of my list, what I have to do is inside those square brackets, I pop a comma and then inside I then use double quotes. Now it's always useful to have double quotes in this case because it allows you to use a single quote for things like commas, um, for apostrophes. I'm going to paste in my deep pink and then that's now part of that list that I can use. 
Okay. That's okay. But I want all of my petals to be different colours. Oh, I've just realised Seth has asked me to do a wheat. Let's have a look. A wheat, which is a nice pastel colour. We'll copy that one. Um, we will add wheat. There we go. And you can draw your flowers any colour you like. There we go. One wheat flower. Let's add that to our list. So again, same thing at the end of the list. Pop a comma in double quotes. In it goes. That's now part of our list of colours. Now sometimes in Python we refer to these as lists. If you are taking computer science, you will refer to this as an array. It is a one dimensional array because it is literally just a one single list of data. One thing to be aware of with lists is they all have to be the same data type. So in this case, we've got all of the words surrounded by double quotes. Can anybody in my Zoom group tell me what the data type is if you see double quotes around a particular piece of data? So we are absolutely identifying a colour, but the data types refer to the type of data that we're actually using. So when we are talking about anything which is surrounded by double quotes, it's called a string. Um, and a string literally is um, a word or a sentence. So we are telling the computer that we are passing them an actual word that uses letters. Um, for things like the minus 150 and the 0 and the 2 and the 500, those are whole numbers. So we don't have to put um, double quotes around them because they're not strings. They are, in fact, integers. And an integer is just the maths co correct term for a whole number. So Bean has made a double stem, which worries me, but I'm really interested to see. Please take a screen capture and pop it into your, uh, your thing so I can see it. So the next thing we're going to do now we've created our wheat is we want to create some random colours. So what I'm going to do is underneath my for loop where I've done for I in range for my draw petals, I'm going to create a random number. And it was this reason that I had the import random at the top. So I'm going to call this petal. Um, now, it's gone. Have I used it anywhere else? No, that's good. We need to make sure that we never use the same name for a variable twice because otherwise we start overwriting each other. So we are going to say petal equals random. So that's a random number. But because we want a random integer, and this is why I talked about integers a second ago, we want a random integer. And an integer is a whole number. So random dot rand int. And then you open up your brackets and you say what you want the random number to be between. Well, we want it to start at zero. So can anyone in the Zoom group tell me why I put zero and not one when I am counting? Yes, because zero is the first number ever. Yes. So when we started programming computers, we forgot to tell them that humans actually count from one. Um, and zero is actually the lowest number. So if you think about some of the other lessons that we've been doing, we talked about our deanery number system. And our deanery number system starts at zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, a computer looked at the deanery number system and went, well, surely we start at zero then. So therefore, when you look at this list of colours. Red is actually not number one, it's number zero. So we're going to start at one and then we're going to go all the way to the length of our colours. And there is a nice, easy, cheeky way of doing this. We could count up the number of colours. We could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. OK, so we could go zero to nine. But if we added another colour, then it would never pick it up. So we get the computer to do it for us. 
Remember my favourite phrase? Genius through the pursuit of laziness. Make the computer do it for you. Len. Len gets the length of something. And then inside those brackets, we are going to go and put in the name of our list. So if we look up here, our list is called colours. I've got a question. So if you are lazy, you are actually a genius. Maybe. If you are using your laziness to your advantage, then you are being a genius. Not every person who is lazy is a genius, but many geniuses are absolutely lazy. OK, so <laughs> no, Bean, you are not a genius with your room. Um, so we are going to say our petal is a random number, a random integer, so a whole number between zero and the length of the colours. Then instead of having wheat, we're going to delete that and we're going to put in petal, except that's going to pass in a number. What do you think I have missed? Now this for my Zoom group is going to be more for those of you who are doing the computer science GCSE. Tell me what I haven't passed in yet. So we know that this needs to be a string, string of petal. I like that idea, the string of petal, um, except that's still going to pass in a sort of a number. So what this is doing is this is getting me um, a thing called an index. Excellent, Seth, brilliant. You're using casting. So you should, you're saying you, you don't want to pass in a, a number. You want to pass in a string. Love it. We want to pass in actually one of these actual words. So we need to refer back to our list and say, well, I've chosen a random number and an index is basically like a position. So the index of red is zero. The index of turquoise is zero, one, two, three. So we've created the index, but we haven't actually said use it. So what I'm going to do is after I've created my petal, I'm then going to create another one, which is called petal color. And petal colour is going to be my colours, which is the name of my list at the top. Then I'm going to use square brackets and pass in my random petal index, my number. That means in here, when I do petal colour, I'm passing in the name of the colour rather than where it appears in the list. So what we are doing here, and I'm going to pop in some notes. This creates a random integer, a whole number, and this one selects the actual name of the colour from the list. using the random number. Then we pass it in as a parameter, at which point it will then go all the way up to our draw and it will then draw using that particular colour. So let's see if this works. This is the danger of live code. So it's drawing. I'm getting, oh no, I've got something horrible. So an index out of range. So it says here, list index out of range on line 50. Now, this is where we need to think about our computer counting from zero. So an out of range means that it has gone zero, one, two, three, four. Now I know that I've got nine on there. So it's gone zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ah, oh, 10. 10 is the length of my list. So if I count as a human, 1 to 10, but as a computer, 0 to 9, which of my lines do I need to, to adjust here to fix this error? 
remembering that an index out of range means that it's gone along the list and it's fallen off the end because it's counted too far. And this is a really regular error that lots and lots of students get. So because I'm counting 0 to 9 instead of 1 to 10, when I got my length of colours over here, I needed to put my cursor there and put a minus 1 because then it's telling me to count from 0 to 9 instead of 1 to 10 because the length of colours is actually 10. So if I run this now, it won't then fall off the end of my list. There's one, two, and a red, another one, through the middle, and we've got some random petals. Okay, I'm going to get you to pop in a tick or a thumbs up for me in the Zoom chat if you have got your random colours. Seth has, Bean hasn't yet. OK, so we've reached the point at which you have got a flower with some random colours. And what I'm going to get you to do is after the lesson is to have a look, um, see if you can, um, first of all, get your flower um, with all of your colours. Um, see if you can adjust these colours up here so we get different petals um, and see if there's something else that you could add to your picture. So I'm going to get you to send me your assignments if you are working on um, on our trinkets as part of the Zoom group. Send me your assignments with your random flowers and see if you can draw one extra thing in your image. Um, making sure that you do that using all of the techniques that we've used so far. OK, so that's it for today. Um, we're going to leave it there next lesson. Um, we've got more coming next week. Um, there is not a Monday class next week because it's Monday bank holiday. Um, however, um, there is another class on Thursday and we're going to be doing some more micro bits next week. Um, and then we're going to do some more turtle um, a couple of weeks later. So there is still our Thursday class running over uh, half term, but there isn't anything on Monday. We do have an A-level class um, on Tuesday. Um, so look out for those emails um, for the next classes. And I will see you guys very soon. <laughs>